You would think that when you have a diagnosis, you would get a treatment plan and every doctor would know what to do for you, but that's not really the case with rare diseases. I took my fourth DNA test a little over five years ago that gave me a diagnosis of Refson disease. I was night blind at 18, so I became aware then I had a problem. I discovered Refsum when I was 50. Prior to being diagnosed, I was, you know, Ironman level triathlete. And then in 2017, I started to, you know, have all of this left leg pain. And it, while I was riding and running, increasingly uh, would have more and more pain. And then you know, six months after that, I started to have this wavy distortion in my peripheral vision. Uh, it, was really, it was really kind of scary time for me. I now wear hearing aids. I use a, a, a service animal, a guide dog, to get around and uh, I no longer drive. That proceeded on to having, seeing 15 different specialists and um, having yeah, countless diagnostic tests. Uh, and uh, I think at one point in time they actually thought I had MS, which wasn't which wasn't correct. You know, I just it, no one was really connecting the dots of, of what I had. Nobody knew what was wrong with me. And then by a long series of lucky breaks, I was discovered by the one guy in England who knew what Refsums was. Until recently, genetic testing has not been routine, even in the countries that have taken it farthest, like places like in Scandinavia, Norway's been one. Other countries have tended to be behind on this, and only now are these type of panels being introduced. Refsum is a genetic disease that affects every cell in the body. Caused by mutations in two genes that we know of. Patients uh, are born normally, they develop normally, they often go through the early stages of life completely unaware of this disease. It can cause loss of vision and blindness. It can cause um, neurological issues like seizures. It can have an impact on what somebody eats. It can have an impact on how a person is mobile and exercises and uh, uh, participates in physical activity. So the best way to diagnose this disorder is to check phytanic acid levels in blood, followed up by genetic testing that encompasses these two genes. Usually people don't think to test for this disease. Usually there needs to be some sort of symptom present before a doctor decides that they're gonna test for this particular disease because it is so rare. The only therapy currently for Refson's disease is this low phytanic acid diet, uh, which, you know, um, phytanic acid isn't listed on any food label, so it makes it very difficult. It's a healthy diet, basically no dairy produce, uh, no red meat, only non-oily fish. Before we started DARE, only 150 foods had actually been tested for their phytanic acid content. Uh, you know, so we're often kind of guessing what is safe to eat and what's not. Not only do we have to worry about a low phytanic acid diet, we also have to worry about releasing any stored phytanic acid because it accumulates in your fat cells, your nerves. Anytime you burn fat, like exercise, or you get sick, or say you have to go for a surgery and they tell you to fast, well, all those things we have to be very careful on because any any release of phytanic, stored phytanic acid will actually increase your levels, increase the uh, symptoms. And you know when you lose your vision, you don't get it back. When you lose your hearing, you don't get it back. To raise awareness for this disease, there's a lot of things that people can do. Being uh, engaged with foundations like the Global Fair, Dare Foundation, they have a lot of opportunities for not just scientists in the field, not just patients in the field, but anybody to sort of put the message out on uh, about Refsum, whether it be through social media channels or in their own local community. The Dare community gives me the ability to talk to other people who also have Refsum. And with the rarity of Refsum disease, it's really nice to know that you're not alone. It's important for anyone to remember that, that anything is possible. You know, if, if anything that we've proved over the last two years in establishing Global Dare Foundation is we just need to come together as a community, you know, whether that's patients, caregivers, researchers, clinicians, dietitians, all coming together towards that final finish line. You know, I spent a lot of time racing uh, in triathlons and now I'm on a different race. And I want to get to that finish line of finding a cure.